<laughs> Welcome, everybody, to uh, our monthly journal club here at Lifespend.io Life Extension Advocacy Foundation. Um, it is March 31st, Wednesday. We usually do it on Tuesday, but we're doing it on a Wednesday now. But um, So welcome yet again. Um, and we have a paper that deals with uh, telomeres uh, and uh, telomere regulation and a, uh, I believe, a kidney fibrosis model in mice. So basically linking um, telomere links with a condition that's found in, in the aged, both age populations of uh, well, many mammals, but including ourselves, um, fibrosis of the kidneys. And uh, the link here, the connection that's being made is between telomere attrition um, and a sensitivity to certain uh, drugs that basically um, perturb kidney function. So this is a, so I'm gonna just pull up this paper right now without much further ado. And we are having a slightly shorter journal club than usual because I have another class starting actually just a few minutes before one. So it's gonna be a short one. So we unfortunately can't, um, can't go on our long lengthy discussions uh, as per usual. Um, this is a very longish paper. There's seven figures I believe on this paper with all the concomitant and sub figures. Um, but we'll get through them as, you know, as swiftly as we can without trimming too much out of them. Um, so let's, let's take a look. So I'm going to share my screen with everybody. Um, and here we go. So um, these are all highlights that I added to the paper here myself reading it. So this is a nature aging paper um, from the Blasco lab. So Saraswati et al. Um, and uh, the paper, its title is short, and dysfunctional telomeres sensitize the kidneys to develop fibrosis. So a very to the point, um, to the point paper. Um, and they look at a number of, uh, number of features here that telomere attrition basically kind of promotes. Um, so along the way to sensitizing kidneys to fibrosis, um, they also notice some other pathologies, such as influencing something called EMP, which is referred to, which is epithelial to mesenchymal uh, transition, which means that your epithelial cells basically undergo a, um, uh, basically an epigenetic switch to this mesenchymal form, which basically um, causes them to, you see that in wound healing, but it uh, can lead to fibrosis. Um, so they basically go through a list of uh, things that are, um, basically switched on uh, in response to dysfunctional telomeres. And, uh, and again, it's fibrotic pathologies, but also this EMT activation. So they do, they do two things. So, so before I scroll through here, I'm just gonna mention that, yes, they mentioned here that chronic kidney disease, that's a disorder with high mortality and it's, it's a demographic of the aging uh, population. Uh, so the connection here that's being made is to you know, do telomeres kind of this telomere attrition um, promote this, and this is a model that they're developing in mice to show that yes, this you know um, this is evidence here at least in their mouse model that telomere attrition or telomere defects um, can lead um, to this mouse model of chronic kidney disease, um, uh, which is manifested here by fibrotic pathologies. So basically, tissue you know the formation of cells that uh, you know that lead to the deposition of extracellular matrix like collagen, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then therefore lead to a dysfunctional or less functioning kidney because the, the tissues are the wrong tissues that are being deposited um, in the kidney. So the kidney is losing glomerular, uh, glomerular filtration and all sorts of other things that it normally does. Um, so for this model, what did they do? Um, so they had uh, telomerase negative mice that they, I believe, passaged for a couple of generations, three generations, I think. Um, so these are TERT double negative mice. Um, but they had to do two other things um, to these mice to basically um, push them kind of over the edge. So it wasn't sufficient for the mice to develop these this fibrosis. I'm going to stop sharing here because I'm talking and I haven't put up a figure yet. So. Face, and then I'll go back and figure. Um, it's not sufficient for the mice to have just a loss of telomere function, but they had to then uh, be triggered um, uh, to undergo fibrosis by adding in um, something that would damage the kidneys. And one thing that they added here was they dosed the mice with folic acid. Um, so at a certain level, which basically led to um, uh, kidney damage. And this was much more pronounced 
in my stat had uh, that were tel telomerase uh, double negative. So double negative mice, I believe, after uh, the third um, uh, third generation. So I'm going to go back here. So back to sharing the screen. Um, okay. So, you know, anybody has any questions, please shout out. Um, yeah, any idea how folic acid toxicity works? Like, I have never heard of that before. Yeah, I looked it up, and evidently, it's, I guess it's used. Um, I think uh, it leads to, like, I think, I think, I think, um, um, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think it leads to, like, a deposition of probably folic acid crystals in the glomerulus of the of the of the kidneys so it's basically like um i want to say it's like kidney stones i think um is it, is it like a rodent specific thing because it like folate toxicity in people i think is like neurological effects and it like takes a ridiculous dose yeah well they did high doses here i don't um yeah it's not right you're right i just googled it right now let me google that for you <laughs> it's uh not toxic for normal humans um neurology right neurological but um for mice, I guess it does, it's a little different. Does does uh, nephronic toxicity, so mouse toxicity. Um, acute toxicity of folic acid. So this is going back to 90, 85. Um, so I'm pulling up some old mice here, uh, old mice studies. Um, the unique toxicity, uh, Acute renal tubular necrosis. So, um, um, you know, without getting too far into that, you know, I don't know if it's just a matter of maybe they have some sort of, you know, different transporters in their in their in their you know um, kidneys that don't let them transport out the folic acid enough, and you get you get crystals forming there. Um, I really don't know exactly what the pharmacokinetics of that are for why exactly it's toxic. Um, and just quickly looking up old papers here, it doesn't appear to be a, um, seeing if there's a keyword here that says exactly why, that if it's, you know, crystal formation, not toxicity. Nephrons, probably, it's cute green, oh, here we go. Um, well, okay, folic acid in induces acute renal failure, ARF. Everything everything needs an acronym. You can't just call it acute renal failure. That's not that's not sufficient. You have to call it ARF <laughs> and put it in parentheses. Oh my God. All right. Um, why? All right. Anyway. Um, by enhancing renal prooxidant state. Um not hundred percent sure. Um well, anyway, we can go yeah, back. I, I think I got a good grip on it. So yeah, <laughs> big crystals form in the kidney. It, it, might, it, might, it might not be crystals. I just, I just threw that out because I'm like, mm, maybe, but you know, it, it could be some other mechanism. Thanks. Yeah. So, so yeah, so it, so it is a, it is a rodent specific thing. Um, and I guess they, they do use that. So let's, um, let's go back to the paper here. So, um, so yeah, so when, so they, so they looked at wild type uh, TERT plus plus and G3 generation three TERT minus minus aged eight to nine weeks. Um, and they all had grossly normal kidney histology. So no, no um, problems. So this is, you know, just going to the first figure is just kind of establishing a baseline. So it's sort of, this is just their protocol. Um, and they establish a dose of FA folic acid milligrams per kilogram. So 125 is sort of where you start getting abnormalities in the TERT minus minus mice, but no abnormalities in the in the TERT plus plus mice. So that's kind of um, that's that's kind of their model right there. Is you know they basically dose these mice. Um, you know here's their here's their model day zero, day seven blood urine samples, day 14 then euthanize. Um, and they look at kidney function, um, uh, creatinine and bun, uh, blood urea, nitrogen levels basically, you know, go up. So the filtration is basically getting damaged here. So you have, you have things that are increasing in the, in the blood as a result. And here's gross morphology. So these are kidneys, these little kidney beans, um, 
It's like, oh, kidney beans. Hey, look at that. They look like kidneys. Um, so these are mouse kidneys right there. And they have this kind of whitish, um, you know, uh, I'm not a histologist, but I guess this is, you know, you've got probably um, fibrous tissue forming there and other, other things that are aberrant. So this is the gross morphology. And it means that you're having some sort of, um, you know, some sort of bad pathology happening there. And that's happening at 125 milligrams per kilogram. So that's, that's the dose that they use for this FH treatment. Um, and that's why they basically, uh, they basic, and this is happening in these tert minus minus mice. Um, I guess, you know, the biggest caveat you can throw here is like, well, you know, these are tert minus minus generation three and you're getting this abnormal histology. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'll toss it out there. Uh, you know, is, is that, is that directly as a result of shortened telomeres, you know, or could there be other things that you can do to the mice that make them um, messed up somehow? And then they'll be sensitive to 125 milligrams per kilogram. And their kidneys also will be, you know, um, is exhibiting these histological, you know, um, aberrations. Um, not sure. Um, but this happens with your tert minus minus G3. So these are the, this is the data right here. So basically n equals six mice. And you can clearly see just by eyeballing this that, yeah, that, that the mice that are G3, um, that are day seven, day 14, you know, are exhibit these pathologies. Anything else, even the, you know, that's day 14 with TERT plus plus, you're having um, kind of, uh, it's, you know, not as, not as bad or not significant. So it's, this is manifesting in these tert minus minus minus. And they do histological sections here. Masson's trichome, which I think is staining for connective tissue, uh, pasty, I think is a related stain. Um, and this, again, this is just a quantification of what you're seeing this histological section. So, um, you can clearly see here that G3 minus minus tert, I mean, looks different. And this is all indicative of fibrotic tissue being deposited in these mice. So that's basically uh, the punchline there. Um, then they go on to um, the kidney functionality, I believe, uh, treated with sublethal doses of folic acid. So um, what else they're looking at? So this is functionality UACR. I have to keep reminding myself of these acronyms and just Please have the, oh yeah, urinary albumin to creatinine ratio. Okay. So um, I'm not sure what's fundamentally more you know, um, additive here. It's just more, um, more functional assays being done on kidney function. Um, blood urine samples at three points. Um, and again, kidney functionality is decreased. And um, again, you could see now close up kidneys look different. Um, so if you're a mouse histologist um, or pathologist, then this probably is not a good looking kidney. Um, it's very pale. So um, looks like there's something wrong with the vasculature there, just by looking at it by eye. Um, um, and the same issue. So uh, let's see, what, what is exactly different from figure two and figure one? Um, I have to go back to that, but it's uh, looks like you're getting similar data there. So so far, kidney functionality is going on, and here they are staining in three um, collagen deposition and activated myofibroblasts in the kidney after a sublethal dose. So as you would expect, um, they're staining for things that are that you would find in fibrotic tissue, such as fibronectin, collagen six, um, and all of these things components go up um, with again. Um, if you're adding in folic acid at that sublethal dose, 125 milligrams per kilogram, but you're not seeing that in uh, just vehicle G3 tert or you know folic acid in your normal wild type mice um, at those time points. Um, so all of the indications for fibrotic tissue are going up. So they're establishing this model here, um, and you're getting um, uh, you're getting um, Myofibroblasts activated. So this is messenger RNA levels for myofibroblast activation, um, showing that you know the cells that are responsible for you know here 
cells that are responsible for laying down this fibrotic tissue are being are being activated. So, um, you know, uh, so far pretty straightforward rundown of of you know this model that they're building here. Um, it's known that folic acid, you know. Um, affects uh, kidney function in mice. And um, here they're establishing that it, um, at a much lower dose, it is doing that in your TERT minus minus mice uh, generation three with low short telomeres. Um, and, you know, this is a potential um, connection here to telomeres and um, uh, increased fibrosis in this mouse model. So um, a lot of work and pretty straightforward, I think to this point. Um, oops, let's go back to our paper. Share my screen. Okay, so that's figure three. So if something catches your eye, let me know. I know I'm zipping through this a little faster than usual. I don't want to get too bogged down because we have a shorter than usual, but a lot of these figures are pretty you know, first when I looked at the paper, I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of figures to go through. But then I was like, well, they, they're actually establishing a lot of background here. So it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's very um, kind of predictable, which is good in science in many cases. So figure four, increased kidney apoptosis and senescence in telom telomerase deficient mice after a sublethal dose of folic acid. Okay, so, um, so now we're getting into something a little bit different. Uh, so these are a markers of senescence. So P21, uh, tumor suppressor, um, various things that are involved in the damage response, um, uh, MH2AX, um, uh, phosphorylated histones, um, things that you would normally associate with, with uh, you know, with a, a damage response. Um, and this is happening, um, this is happening not uh, not with telomerase negative mice generation three, but you're getting this particular, uh, you know, damage response uh, being triggered um, in cells that, um, that have been treated or in mice that have been treated with folic acid. Um, so basically, basically triggering. So I'm not exactly sure um, why I guess, um, you know, this is uh, this is a negative. You know, this is a negative consequence. Uh, and the question is, well, you know, for me is why exactly um, are you getting uh, more kidney apoptosis and senescence in telomerase deficient mice after a sublethal dose? Um, it looks like here uh, that if you're looking at your um, you're looking at staining for uh, DAPI and a telomerase specific stain. Um, don't know which antibody they used. Um, there's a number of different proteins that you can you can stain at the end of telomeres. Um, it looks like, uh, so let's see, is this a uh, number of cells that are this increased? I believe it's increased. Um, I want to say it's increased telomerase attrition, but um, I want to attribute that to, and that would promote a damage response, um, which I'm not exactly sure why that would be the case with more folic acid. And excuse me, I'm scrolling through here, but there's no text kind of interrupting these figures. So I have to go through like six figures to jump to the text here, um, which was figure three. Um, I think that was the last part, was it figure three or figure four that I was on here? Um, increase, yeah, here we go. This is where I highlighted it here. Short telomeres have been shown by us and others induce a persistent DNA damage response to ground and Ali. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out why you would get um, more shortened. So yeah, you have an apoptosis marker, right? FA treatment. Um, okay, so the model shows that these events produce increased turnover of kidney cells, uh, leading to telomere shortening. So for, uh, okay, finally we confirm presence of shorter telomeres. Um, so they're attributing this to increased, uh, increased turnover 
that's happening um, as a result of folic acid treatment. Um, probably, if I were to speculate, um, you have damage happening to the to the kidneys. You have increased turnover of cells. That's leading to shortened telomeres because the cells can't replicate their telomeres anymore. They're TERT double negative. And the cells are undergoing also an epithelial to mesenchymal transition. And as a result, they're basically laying down fibrotic tissue. That's probably probably what's happening. So that's, um, that's uh, that is probably the case here. Oops, so let me go back to the paper. Um, so that was figure four. Um, and we got uh, three more figures, I believe. So let me just go to share screen. Okay. So, so far so good with this model. Um, and of course, they show that short telomeres um, induce tubular damage and immune fil infiltration in the kidney. So um, you're having a damage response here. So as also as a consequence, so these are, I believe this is a macrophage marker, F480. Uh, there's a number of markers here that are immune markers. And uh, this immunohistochemistry here is showing uh, that you're getting these cells that are infiltrating. So it's basically a sign of inflammation. So a damage is accruing in, in the kidneys um, and you're getting uh, various cells. Um, that are associated with inflammation, um, macrophages basically um, infiltrating, um, infiltrating the, uh, the tissues here. So this is a cross-section of, um, not exactly sure what exact area of the kidney here, um, if it's the glomerulus or it's the cortex or, but it is, um, it is a cross-section, a histopathological cross-section of the kidney. Um, and these numbers go up again only when you are basically treating the cells with um, folic acid, and they are generation three tert double negative cells. So all of that is happening. So cells are damaged, um, and then we get to figure. Scroll up here. These are big figures. Um, Where's the legend? Legend is like on the second page, is it not? Okay, now well, that's figure seven. Where's figure six legend? What was my finger on this here? Where is the legend on this? The legend just disappear on this figure? Okay. Um, I'm like a politician without a teleprompter. Completely lost. Um, all right, what am I looking at here? Um, well, they are doing a genome-wide study here. They're basically looking at genes that are not regulated um, in response to folic acid treatment um, and also messenger RNA levels. Uh, so basically looking at, you know, cells that are um, you know, TERT double positive versus G3 TERT double negative, um, and basically factors that are correlated with the epithelial to mesenchymal transition, um, and also TGF beta signaling. Um, so I'm just jumping to the messenger RNAs that are specific to these pathways. Um, and in a lot of cases, you can see a correlation here. I think SNAIL1 is one, and SNAIL2 are EMT specific. Um, uh, messenger RNAs and those correlate basically. So they're basically just giving you um, more data showing that your these cells are undergoing this epithelial uh, to mesenchymal transition. Um, and also that they are uh, losing, um, well, there's less E cadherins. So cadherins are basically molecules that help stick cells together, right? So the cells are moving around essentially. So that's, that's again, indicative of this um, epithelial to mesenchymal transition, uh, meaning that again, all everything points to this is you know these are all the kind of markers of cells that are um, transitioning to a state that's going to end up with fibrosis in the kidneys. Right? So um, and and as a result of folic acid at the dosage of 125 milligrams per kilogram in double negative 
you know, telomere eroded uh, rodent cells in situ inside, inside the mouse. Um, so um, the last figure is interesting because um, they've been establishing this, um, this model here. Um, and then they switch to another model where it's a, um, they want to they wanna see the effects of um, some of these, they want to see a recapitulation, see if this uh, is recapitulated in uh, mouse cells that are knocked out for TRF, uh, so TRF1. So this is a, um, this is a component of, so if you go to, at the ends of telomeres, um, if you go to ends of telomeres, and there's no figure here of ends of telomeres, but if you uh, look at a telomere, um, it's basically, uh, it forms these weird loop-like structures that are called D-loops, where it's sort of like looped onto itself. And there's a whole complex of proteins, um, I believe it's called a sheltering complex, that keeps them from being recognized as double-stranded breaks and does all sorts of other things to help maintain their integrity, um, recruiting telomerase and um, so on and so forth. Um, and if you disrupt any of these components, then the telomeres become unraveled, so to speak, and can be recognized as double-stranded breaks and problems can happen. So uh, they wanted to see if they can um, further kind of poke the hornet's nest with regards to the telomeres by disrupting TRF1, which is um, responsible for maintaining the integrity of telomeres. Um, and interestingly here, um, I don't know exactly um, so uh, Michael was curious as to exactly how um, folic acid worked in inducing toxicity in, in, um, in uh, mouse kidneys. Um, here they, they use tamoxifen to knock out TRF1. Um, and I, that's, I th is that, that's a chemotherapeutic drug, I think, right? I think that's a property of their construct, though. I think they've got a is construct it? that um, the knockdown is conditional. Oh, on. yes, it's flox, flox. So, it's, so, so they use it. Okay. So I was, yeah, I, I totally didn't. So good, good catch there. So it's basically flox. I was like, I was scratching my head. I'm like, tamoxifen. Like, what? I was, okay. So I, I was actually wondering if their tert construct was the same thing. So I, I've, my re it looks like their tert construct is the whole mouse and their TRF1 is just some kidney part. Um, hmm. I, I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's the whole mouse because it's, uh, yeah, it's birth to humane endpoints. So it is mice. It's a transgenic mouse. You're right. So it's floxed um, TRF1. So the tamoxifen is, yeah, it's just, a, I, when I was reading the text, I, I don't think it was like, for some reason, it just didn't convey that. They, they it, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, uh, not their fault. It's my fault for, you know, reading it and probably not seeing the the, the flossed part of that, uh, which is basically, uh, for those of you out there, it's basically a way to switch on a recombinase that cuts out the gene. So you can basically disrupt genes uh, very readily. Um, so let me, um, let me go back to sharing my screen. Uh, to our last figure. Um, and interestingly here, they do not, unless I totally misread this again, I don't think they use folic acid in conjunction with this. And I don't think they use, I don't think these are um, uh, TERT double negative mice generation three. These are just TRF1 knockout mice um, using uh, using, uh, let me see, see what they say in the text here. So now I'm like, how did I skip that part that they used? Uh, um, what do they use? Figure, uh, it's extended data, figure seven. Oh wait, there's, I think there's still figure eight, is there? There is figure eight. Ooh. Okay, so there's one more figure, <laughs> eight figures. Um, <clears throat> okay, so they, they, so they have a TRF1 model. And um, interestingly, this seems to be much more severe. So this, is, so this is a different model, again, disrupting telomeres. 
Um, but it looks like just TRF1 deletion itself induces renal fibrosis. So they're basically doing the same um, analysis, so to speak, that they did for uh, the folic acid. Um, I'm not sure why um, TRF1 disruption would be much more severe. So we have a, a chat here, a question. Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure why uh, why it would be much more um, you know much more uh, uh, disruptive uh, to the you know to the to the to the mice. So it seems to be a much more I guess um, severe model, so to speak, because TRF1 deletion induces renal fibrosis. So yes, so you know, they've got the same staining here, Masson's trichome staining. Um, so you have more evidence of uh, cells that are indicative of fibrosis, um, at messenger RNA levels that indicate epithelial mesenchymal transition to go up. Um, and going down to the last figure, I think they look at other the last figure. Um, So they showed that uh, the EMT phenotype was rescued. Um, so let's see, how do they, uh, did they use a plasmid here? Um, trying to, yeah, mTERD containing vector. So in this model here, I don't think they, again, I did not go into their, all of their um, uh, supplemental data here, but maybe it's there, but it did, uh, but when they took their TERT double negative G3 mice and they added in a vector um, and here in A and B on the left is just basically showing that you have, um, you have, you know, uh, uh, messenger RNA that's indicative of expression from the vector. Um, at least when it came down to, when it came down to markers for the epithelial mesenchymal transition, you know, adding in your, you know, your TERT, um, certainly recapitulated or rescued the EMT phenotype. Um, but I don't know how far they went with this as far as will it protect against folic acid treatment? Um, so, you know, this is suggestive evidence, you know, that you can, you can get rescue here. Um, but again, they're only looking at markers that are indicative for the epithelial to mesenchymal transition. Um, and I'm, so I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure how much of a robust, oops, I'm gonna scroll back up here. It's kind of hard to scroll this. So this is, uh, you know, again, messenger RNA levels in figure eight on the bottom. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure how robust this rescue is. Um, so I think really the, you know, the, the, some of the clear points from takeaway points from this paper is, is that they're trying to establish a model um, of kidney fibrosis that would mimic something that happens um, as we all age, specifically looking at a kidney model and recapitulating this in mice using basically um, folic acid as a damaging agent and showing that cells that are, you know, that have uh, shorter than normal telomeres because they're generation three telomerase double negative mice, um, you know, uh, are, are sensitive to this, uh, to this treatment. Um, and that this is then leading into um, kidney fibrosis. So um, I think, you know, there might be a little bit more ways to go to see how relevant this model is to, you know, to aging, you know, aged, uh, kidneys that are suffering from fibrosis. Um, certainly, you know, um, some of the things I think to look for is, you know, any, any treatments or any par particular methods that you would use to reverse the, you know, phenotype of a fibrotic kidney. If, you know, if we have that out there right now, um, this should be um, replicable, <laughs> should be, you know, we should be able to apply this to this model and, and see the same results, right? So that would be a good positive control that, 
that your that you know existing interventions that can, can that can do that um, could work in this in this fibrotic model as well. Um, so that's um, so that's it. So it's a uh, you know it's um it's a paper that's establishing uh, a new model for um, one type of illness. Um, that's associated with aging. And again, I want to stress that this is, you know, associated. It's a disease of aging. And um, it is useful in the sense that, you know, as drugs are being developed um, for human conditions um, that manifest uh, as a result of the aging process, um, that's really the only way such drugs uh, right now, at least in the U.S. market, um, I don't know if any other markets are actually will, will be tested, right? So, pulmonary fibrosis, kidney fibrosis, um, Alzheimer's disease, various dementias, yeah, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, litany of, of things that happen as we, as we age. Um, you know, if, if this model is correct, that, um, that this is accelerated by eroded telomeres, then, you know, looking for compounds that could, um, that could basically um, re-extend telomeres, um, would then have a, you know, would be on a track to being approved as a drug to target, obviously, um, kidney fibrosis. Um, but of course, if they're tackling something that far, uh, you know, that far upstream as telomere attrition, then those drugs would be useful in many other um, aging, anti-aging interventions. Um, so I think, you know, this is sort of the strategy. I think this ties into the strategy for developing uh, these classes of drugs that really at their heart are anti-aging interventions, even though initially as they're being tested on humans, they're going to be tested on uh, particular, you know, specific accepted diseases that uh, happen to be diseases of aging that are manifested by more underlying, um, you know, underlying conditions um, such as perhaps telomere attrition in this case, and, and by developing drugs here, wouldn't just fix fibrotic kidneys, but would potentially fix pulmonary fibrosis and a host, whole host of other things that perhaps are at, at their, you know, that as their root cause, um, uh, shorter than average telomeres. So, um, so that's, that's kind of my, my two cent discussion there on, on the usefulness of such work. Yeah, I feel like they did a pretty, they did a really good job, in my opinion, establishing that in their injury based model, they can get, they can completely mess up their kidneys. Um, but uh, what I, what I really hope that the authors are planning on in the future is to like kind of repeat these results with a tissue restricted TERT knockout. Mm -hmm. Like, um, when you see like when they talk about EMT, you think, oh, okay, probably it's the epithelial cell because they're the ones that have a lot of turnover. That's where like all, that's where maybe folate's being deposited near them. Then they, they have like figure five, with ha which has these immune phenotypes and oh, you see inflammation. Um, and well, is that because there's a TERT knockout that's also affecting the immune system? Is that a mm. separate thing? Or is right, that right. Um, directly because of the primary damage? And the, I think this actually kind of matters a lot because yeah. like one of the things which is confusing about the telomerase field as I understand it and I'm not an expert is that telomere length seems to matter like sometimes. Like for certain cell types, telomeres seem to be rightly limiting for like how long cell can actually last, but not always. And um, like it even varies in species, like how much telomeres matter in mammary gland epithelium is different between mice and humans. So like this paper says that, all right, you, you knock out TERT, you screw up the kidney, but is that, why? Like, is that the epithelial cells? Is that the, mm -hmm. is that the stromal yeah. cells? Is okay. that something else? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And yeah, I, I don't think that, I don't think that like disqualifies any of the findings in this paper, but that's like the thing I want to know after reading this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think there was another paper that um, I think we covered here, and I may have covered it somewhere else, where where it was also um, uh, they were it was looking at um, I want to say telomeres, but it probably wasn't telomeres, but it was also a a knockout that was looking at uh, you know 
uh, neurohistopathology and looking at you know ne neural neural functions, but it was a knockout that affected every cell, right? And you're thinking it's like, well, is it because of the knockout was in the neurons, or is it because it was in the, you know, was it in in cells lining the blood vessels leading up to the brain? I you know because they're all affected, right? So. Um, so, you know, so, so yeah, having, having a more specific knockout that would, that, you know, under a promoter that's, that's specific to cells in, in parts of the kidney. Um, yeah, that, you know, obviously that would, that would really, that would really um, uh, zoom in on, on what, what exactly, what cells are, are actually being affected specifically um, and would, you know, isolate this to um, specifically to, you know, a purely a, kidney fibrosis specific model that is related to telomere attrition specifically within kidney cells because those cells are being damaged and those are the cells that are being turn turned over and, and, and leading specifically to fibrosis versus, you know, um, any supporting cells of which there are many supporting cells, you know, that can have other um, contributing effects because their telomeres are also, um, there's also telomere attrition. And of course your folic acid is going everywhere, I believe, as well. Um, so it's probably having toxicity effects at that level um, in other cell types as well, um, not just the kidney. Um, yeah, I think it's more than just an academic point too. Like you were talking about potential like therapeutic implications of telomerase mm -hmm. and like the big danger, like the, the scare people will say, well, if, if you increase length of telomeres, are you gonna cause cancer? And at an organism level, level, if you like, you allow all cell types to have unlimited telomeres, yeah, you're going to get cancer. But what if it turns out that there are certain cell types that don't have cancer risk, but can still benefit from having elongated telomeres? Like, that's one potential way you might be able, if you could target that, that you mm -hmm. might be able to mitigate the cancer risk of like telomere elongation while still benefiting from it um, in the long run. So um, a lot of work. Um, I, certainly this is the first paper I think that is actually setting, um, you know, setting the table, doing the groundwork for a fibrotic um, kidney uh, model in mice um, and linking it potentially to telomere attrition. Um, so uh, I commend the lab for that. You know, there's, you know, there's, uh, again, we went through eight figures here rather swiftly <laughs> and with a lot tons of sub figures we just couldn't get into. Uh, because of the time constraint right now, uh, but there's and then there's also a ton of supplemental data that I didn't even touch on, but it's mentioned in the paper as well. So um, ain't just ain't no way to get through all of that in 45 minutes. You'll have um, to do a, Oliver. You'll have to do a captain, uh, captain's uh, supplemental and record it, and we'll release it later. Yeah, you know, like Kirk used think... to do that. So if it's good for <laughs> Captain Kirk, it's good enough for you, right? Those are usually really brief, like. 20 seconds. So it's okay. So we'll recap the supplemental data in 20 seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so I, I guess that's it for, for, for this, for the time that we have. It's 1247 right now. Um, and I think, uh, I think we, we did a fairly decent job of going through the paper in the allotted time that we had, which is way shorter than usual. Yeah. I think this is a, this is a record uh, for you. It's uh, a lightning round. Yeah, again, we, we couldn't go through every single figure, but I, I think we got I think we got the highlights. We got the high points. And if anybody wants to access the paper later and then dig through, I, I think this this uh, is a good uh, this journal club here is a good springing off point to go dive in and um, and, uh, you know, and go through the details if uh, if that is what you wish to do. So uh, the long and short of it is, guys, we still don't know whether telomerase is going to be useful or not. We just was don't that a, Is that an intentional pun? That was good. Uh, we just don't know. Um, I think it'll be situational. Those are my thoughts on the matter. Um, as Michael mentioned earlier, it is a little bit situational. Um, telomeres, mm, they're important in aging, I believe, but I don't think they're important in the way that a lot of people think they are. So 
they certainly uh, contribute to dynamic stability or instability when they're too short. Um, I think they might be useful for things like uh, trauma, you know, in, in the case where you need to get rejuvenation and regenerate tissues really, really, really quickly, they could find potential application in, in uh, trauma. Um, as an anti-aging thing, uh, I think the jury is still out and they've been trying since 1999 uh, at the days of Geron uh, to try and uh, get to the bottom of it. And we're still not, we're still none the wiser, not yet. I think we should get the MitoSense team on this. And, uh, you know, they're trying to accelerate evolution by putting in all the mitochondrial genes into the nucleus. I say their next task is to make all our chromosomes circular. That's it. Just get telomerase right out the picture. Just, just every chromosome, one big plasmid. <laughs> I'm pretty sure rats. <laughs> Why have, not? It worked for bacteria. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've seen those um, complete circular um, things in, in rats. Pretty sure it was rats that I've seen it in. Interesting. But there you go. I, I, I'm still a subscriber to the old TPE old, the telomere positioning effect over long distances. I think that's, that is how it contributes more than anything. It's an inability to form the loop once it becomes so short, and thus it stops silencing some genes that are important in genomic instability. There you go. That's my two Ps or two cents or whatever currency you're using in your local area, feel free to adjust with exchange rates taken into account. And uh, I couldn't tell you how many Copex that is. So sorry about that for those of you there. Um, that's it, Nick. Are we done? I, I suppose yeah. we better yeah, we are. go and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. I don't know what it's like in the US, but it's a glorious uh, day here in the UK. It's nice out there too. I think our, I think New York and, and, parts of the uk are synchronized so yeah although we've got we've got a heat wave this week uh two or three days of heat and then we've got snow forecast on sunday and monday so we just can't win it's barbecue weather outside right now and it's going to be snowing on sunday so i don't know i just don't know what's next fire and brimstone in the uk no one could tell you it's so unpredictable all right, guys. All right. I guess we will see you next time. Um, Oliver, maybe. Well, we might have we'll a surprise. See. We might yeah. have a surprise. We um, might have a surprise guest. Mm. And uh, we might have. So depending on um, how situations pan out. But if not next month, then the month after. But very soon we will we will have a we will have a, a special um, special edition of Journal Club and a surprise guest with some hot off the presses um, data. Hopefully. There you go. There's a tease, and we're not telling you anymore. Yeah. So, so don't ask, because I'm not telling you. We like to keep uh, a few things up our sleeve, but yeah, we've we've got a few things in the pipe. So, fingers crossed. We'll keep you informed. Um, I'm just going to let everybody know if you are actually a lifespan hero. I know that we um, email you the uh, details of journal clubs directly. Uh, if you do use our website, I'm honestly curious if anybody's noticed it, but we do have a Heroes Corner. So it's just under the news when you're logged in, you'll see Heroes Corner and also up in your, your top right as well when you log in, there's a Heroes Corner. I put the connection details in there as well. So, and there might be some other exciting things being put there soon, but I, I'm gonna tease you again, I'm afraid. I'm not gonna tell you what's going there soon, but it's some stuff for to show our appreciation. So. God, I'm such a tease this afternoon. Right, and on that note, <laughs> thanks very much for joining us, everybody, and everybody who joined us on Facebook as well today. If you are interested in uh, supporting shows like this and all the work that we do, uh, maybe consider making a one-time donation or, even better, becoming one of the Lifespan heroes and uh, come and join us live on the call. And you can learn more about that at uh, www.lifespan.io forward slash heroes. So we will see you next time. Thank you, folks. Very interesting. <laughs>